Hi, Justin with Seaboard Marine. We're here today to talk about freshwater flushing. Now, freshwater flushing is where we flush the raw water or cooling circuit of a marine engine that's been run in a salt or brackish water environment. In this video, we're going to talk about how to set up a freshwater flush system, different ways to perform a freshwater flush, and we're going to talk a little bit about marine age. So stick around. Before we get into freshwater flushing, I'd like to talk about marine age, which is related to freshwater flushing. Marine age is a term that Tony's been using for a few decades to describe the sort of real, pragmatic condition of an engine or an installation in a vessel. Now, uh, boaters and engine manufacturers often use engine hours as a measure of the age of an engine, the condition of an engine, service intervals, things of that nature. And that makes sense for certain internal workings, oil changes, valve adjustments, etc. But when it comes to things like the raw water cooling circuit or other metallic parts of the vessel that may be um, static but are exposed to the environment, those things can tend to age completely irrespective of engine hours. And this is where the term marine age is uh, very effective in describing that. So you could take a, one boat that has 100 hours but has been sitting in the water for 10 years versus a boat that has 10,000 hours but has been sitting in the water for one year. And while the internals of the engine may have slightly more wear on the high hour engine, if you have a boat sitting in water for 10 years, especially if it's neglected, that vessel and that engine and that whole installation could be a complete nightmare. If you let your boat sit for any length of time, whether it be a few days, a few weeks, or a few months between usage, then you're really doing yourself a disservice if you're not performing a freshwater flush because you can essentially hit the pause button on marine age and greatly extend the service interval for your raw water circuit. Okay, let's talk about freshwater flush setups. So here we have a basic freshwater flush setup. And this is really simple. So I got a whole display here. I've got a through hole, a seat cock, an elbow, a street elbow, some hose, our sea strainer, our um, freshwater flush fitting, and then our suction hose to our pump. So we have a SMX 1730 pump here. We like to put our freshwater flush connection right here at the sea strainer lid. But there's a lot of different ways you could set it up. You could put a connection on the side of one of your elbows, anywhere in the system. There could be elbows next to your C strainer, elbow next to your through hole, um, or you could put a T in line in one of these hoses. Um, in fact, we sell a T fitting on our website. So there's a lot of ways you can introduce water, and it doesn't matter a whole lot, but there are some different considerations. Really, you should do it in a place that's convenient and easy to reach, and that's the number one thing. If it's easy to get to, then you're more likely to perform the freshwater flush, and that's really important, and that's an important aspect of the setup. Aside from injecting water into your suction side of your raw water circuit, there's other ways that you can get water into the system. You can actually use the suction from the pump to suck water into the system, and you could do that even with a setup like this. And some people like to use a vessel such as their bait tank or a fish hold or even some kind of bucket or something to hold water and suck water through the engine that way. So you have something to act as a buffer. Another option is to inject water onto the output side of your pump. Now this works only if you do not have a lift muffler. If you have a lift muffler, you don't want to be introducing water here because you can overfill your lift muffler and cause some problems. If you do have a lift muffler, you got to be careful how you perform a fresh water flush. But if you don't have a lift muffler, if you have a traditional wet exhaust with a riser and it just goes out, then you can connect water here on the output side of the pump and flush out your raw water circuit uh, without even having to start the engine. Of course, it won't, clean, it won't flush the sea strainer or the, the pump. Now, the easiest and safest way to perform a fresh water flush is simply to introduce water into the suction side of your raw water circuit. You're going to connect your dock hose, turn the water on. When you're ready to perform your flush, you'll open the ball valve, and that will start flushing water out of the through hole, leaving the seacock in the open position. Now, if you leave the seacock open, you go up to the helm and you start the engine and you run the engine for a while with the seacock open, feeding water, fresh water in. 
Once you've run the engine for about three to five minutes, you can turn the engine off and then close the fresh water connection and the seacock still open. You don't have to do anything with it. And that is the safest way to go about it. Now I know some of you have sort of a mental thing. You've got to see fresh water going in and know that there is absolutely no raw water coming through and getting mixed in. Now before we get into this, I'm going to say this. It's much safer to leave the seacock open. Furthermore, it's much better to perform a fresh water flush that's 80% or 85% fresh water and 15 or 20% raw water is much better than doing nothing. And it's so easy and convenient to do it that way. I mean, you literally connect your hose, turn it on, start the engine, turn off the engine, shut it off. And that's it. It's so easy. So I would like you all to consider going about, going about it that way. Now, if you insist on closing the seacock, you need to be careful. Now, you don't want to close the seacock and then introduce fresh water into the system with the seacock closed. Because now you're going to start trying to pump water through the pump. And that can be problematic. We've played around with these pumps, and depending on where the impeller stops, sometimes they create almost a complete block of flow. Sometimes water can flow through them pretty easily, depending on the pump and the condition of the impeller. There's no way to say for sure how that is going to be. It, you, there's too many variables to really predict whether or not water will easily flow through the impeller or whether it will be a complete block. And it can be anywhere in between. If you do decide that you want to close the seacock, the way you perform your freshwater flush is to connect your freshwater hose with the seacock in the open position. You will open the ball valve for the fresh water, start your engine, and now you're drawing a, some combination of fresh water and seawater, assuming the fresh water can't keep up. Now, if the fresh water is a sufficient supply, you may already be pumping water out of the through hole and into the engine. So, but if you must close this, the, the valve, now is the time. Once the engine is running, this is open, now you close the ball valve for the seacock, and now you'll have only fresh water feeding your engine. Now there's a couple of things that come up here, a couple of common questions we get. One is, you may see your hose get sucked flat. It may squeeze in. It may squeeze in a little, it may squeeze in a lot. This freaks a lot of people out, but realistically, it's not really a problem. Even if the hose kind of flattens out, even if it looks totally flat, trust me, water's still flowing through there, and it's enough water to lubricate your impeller. I mean, unless you just have no flow coming out of your hose. If you turn on the hose and you see any kind of decent stream coming out of there, these impeller pumps, they don't need to be fed with a full hose of water to be safely run. They just need enough steady flow of water to keep the impeller lubricated and cool so it doesn't overheat and to flush out the system. So we have seen that most dock hoses supply plenty of water. We haven't really come across any that don't supply enough water, but it is possible. So you're flushing your engine with the seacock closed. You have water coming in through the ball valve. Your engine is running. Now is a tricky spot because you don't want to shut this off with this on, and you can't shut them both off with the engine on. So the order that you shut everything down is important. I would say the easiest way is to open the seacock first. And that's always good because the more we keep this thing open, the safer we are. Open the seacock first. Now your engine is drawing some slight combination of, of fresh water and maybe a little bit of salt water for just a few moments, hopefully, because as soon as you open the seacock, you run up and shut off the engine. Or if you have somebody with you, you do it at the same time, virtually the same time. Open the seacock, okay, shut off the engine, boom, shut off the engine. And then you can close this. And now you're in a position where your seacock is open for the next time you're on your boat. You don't have to worry about it and you flush your engine and everything's set, you disconnect your hose and you're off and running. So if you must close your seacock, that is the way we recommend doing it. Now another way that you can flush an engine is by connecting a hose to your suction side of your circuit and putting that hose into a supply of fresh water, submerging it into a supply of fresh water. Now you'll need a hose that can handle suction, so, and it might be a good idea to use a larger than something larger than a garden hose, although at idle a garden hose will probably work if it's a stiff, nice stiff garden hose. So what you would do is fill up some vessel, it could be your bait tank 
or a, uh, a fish hold or even a bucket. You fill it up with water and put the suction hose inside the bucket. Open this. Start your engine with the seacock closed. Start your engine and it'll draw water through the bucket and continually feed water into the bucket. You don't want to ever run your pump dry. Make sure that you have to watch the level of that bucket or that uh, vessel, whatever you're holding water in. You have to watch the level of it and make sure it never sucks, the pump, doesn't suck the pump dry. And if it does, you need to shut off the engine immediately. So, um, and then when you're done, you simply turn off the engine and you can open the seacock again and close the ball valve for that suction hose and you're good to go. Thanks for watching. Please comment down below how you set up your freshwater flush system. We know there's a lot of different ways to do it. A lot of you have come up with some really interesting um, solutions for freshwater flushing. Uh, we like a fairly simple approach, but some of the more fancy approaches are pretty cool. They take a little more effort and time to set up, but once set up, um, they can be very effective and work really well for different boats. Please like and subscribe, and we'll see you next time.